Okay, what we're going to be talking about is the law of signs and showing the proof of where this exactly comes from. So to get us started here, we've got a triangle ABC. You can see it's not a right triangle here. And we've got it and labeled the vertices and we've labeled the corresponding sides with the same letters, A, B, and C. And to get us started here, what we're going to do is drop an altitude down from C to the opposite side so that it makes a 90 degree right angle with side C. So I have a right angle here and here. And what we, the whole goal of the law of sines is to come up with an equation that governs some sort of pattern between these angles A, B, and C. So let's take a look at angle A and angle B to get us started. And let's just work with angle A right away. So looking at angle A, um, we have our measurement here outlined in red and we've got our altitude and we'll label that X and looking at the sides in this triangle here that we have this right triangle uh, we can see that in relation to angle A X here would be our opposite side and B would be the hypotenuse of this right triangle so since this is the law of sines and since we know that the trig function that governs opposite and hypotenuse is sine uh, we can set up the following equation we know that the sine of angle A is going to be equal to our opposite, which is side x, over our hypotenuse, which is side b. And let's just go ahead and solve this equation for the variable x, and we'll see why in just a second. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by b, we'll get the following. b times the sine of a is going to be equal to x. And we're just going to kind of put this on hold for a second. We're going to come back and use it in just a minute. Um, let's go back and take a look at angle B. We can kind of do the same idea here. With looking at the measure of angle B here, which I've outlined in blue now, we can see that X is going to be still the opposite side for this angle, only now we're going to have side A as the hypotenuse for this right triangle on the left. So we're going to have a similar but slightly different equation. We can set up here saying that the sine of angle B still opposite over hypotenuse only now the opposite will be x and the hypotenuse will be a and let's do the same thing let's solve this equation now for this altitude x so we'll multiply both sides of the equation by a and we'll get the following a times the sine of angle b will equal x and we can see here once we solve both of these equations for x that b times the sine of a equals x and a times the sine of b equals x, well, that must mean that these two things are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and write that down. We can say that b times the sine of a is equal to a times the sine of b. And this right here is essentially our law of sines, but let's just go ahead and rewrite this into a way that might be a little bit easier to use and remember. So if we divide both sides of this equation by b, We'll see the b's cancel out on the left, and we'll be left with sine of a is equal to a times the sine of b over b. So if we were to take this equation now and divide both sides of it by a, well, that'll cause the a to cancel out on the right and move it over to the left here in the denominator. And we'll essentially have what we'll call our simplified version of the law of sines. We can say that the sine of angle a over the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. A little bit easier to remember because the A's go with each other and the B's go with each other. Uh, we could basically just repeat this proof, it's just dropping the altitude from vertex A across, and we can see that by the same steps here that the sine of angle C over the side C will actually be equal to these two as well. And what we have here is our law of sines. And that's where it comes from.